Good morning. May we please stand for the lighting of the candles. I was told in the sign room that we have five minutes, so you may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. May we please stand for the lighting of the counters.
We come to worship you, not because of what you have done, not because of what you're going to do, but because of who you are. You are the one that stepped out in the middle of nowhere and said, let there be light, and there was light. Yeah. Yeah. As you remain standing, we ask that you join in our open hymn, Faithful Our Father, final page 17. Thank you. 
Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we will have a reading of our Old Testament, Psalm 100, which I will be reading. Our New Testament, Gospel of Matthew, which will be read by Minister Jacob Parker. Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness and come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. He he is, it, it is he that make us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep are his pastor. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving, and his coat with praise. Give thanks to the Lord. Bless it, his name. For the Lord God is good. His steadfast love endure forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. May God have a blessing to the reading of the word for the good and the edification of our soul. Good morning, church family. Good morning. God is good. the time God is good. Amen, amen, amen. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. And if you have your Bibles, those who are there serving with us virtually, please join us and read along with us. The gospel reading comes from the gospel of Matthew chapter 3 verses 13 through 17. And it reads, then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw God's spirit descending like a dove and a lightning on him. And a voice from the heavens said, This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Maybe seated. We come this morning praising God and giving the honor to God for another Father Day. Wishing all Father near and far a happy Father Day. And for me, there's one father that is above all father. And that's the one that sat in heaven for 72 years plus two months. He has been more than a father to me. He has been my guide. He has been my leader. He has been my shoulder to lean on in a time of stone. When I was sick, he was my doctor. When I was lonely, he was my friend. When I didn't know where to go and how to go, he was my guide. Brother Robert Mitchell is gonna come and he's gonna lead us in the morning prayer. Following Brother Robert Mitchell, we will have song and praise from the choir.
Happy Father's Day. Takes a man to be a father. Real man. That loves his family. Real man who loves the church. And pastor asked me to pray. Seemed like that, 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 that procedure just started. Been wanting to fool with me all week. But the doctor said, Robert, you're still healing. Takes time. But I know a doctor. His name is Jesus. See, I'm not going to let any rocks cry out for my praise. For I know who Jesus is. Brought me from a mighty long way. And David said, I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And I just say, thank you. We pray for the Stokes family this morning, the family of Randy Reed, Craig Stokes, the brother-in-law of Randy Reed, passed away. Lord, we know some in the congregation are bereaved. Some are in their sick room, and they're laying on that bed of affliction. But we got a God that have brought us from a mighty, mighty long way. Look where he brought us from. Can't do nothing but be a testimony. Look where he's brought me from. Look where he brought us from. Each one of us got a story to tell. Each one of us is a living testimony. For what God can do. And we just thank him. And we go to his throne of grace this morning. Father God. We look. Back on our life. We look back on our life. That the fathers that you have blessed us with. Fathers that are gone on the glory. That have paid the way and showed us what we must do. When we come this morning, Heavenly Father, with our hands outstretched to thee, oh, for there's no other help that we my know. Lord, my Lord. If thine will withdraw thyself from thee, <laughs> oh, where shall we go? For Father God, you are the potter, yes, and yes. we are the common clay. Yes. Melt us, mold us, Make us in thine will, while we are yet patient and waiting, yielded and still. Father God, we didn't come this morning for no outside show to this unfriendly world. But we come for you said every head must bow and every tongue shall confess. We confess in this morning the goodness of your son. For you so loved the world that you gave us the very best that you had. You sent your son, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Yes, yes. Lily of Valley. Yes, oh, Jesus. Yes. Bright and morning star. You see, when the doctor give us those reports, uh -huh. we call on the name of Jesus. Shelter in the time of mighty storm. Yes, yes. Oh, we call on Jesus, our rock in a weary land. We call his name Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, Look sir. where you brought us from. Yes. Brought us from a mighty long way. As we prepare to celebrate June 19, look where you brought us from as a people. Yes. Yes. When our ancestors had to plow those fields. Ride those old rugged ship. Oh, Lord Jesus, you was there. And we come this morning and say thank you. Yes. We praise you. Mm -hmm. We magnify you. Yes. We glorify you. Yes. Lord, those that are bereaved, we pray that you wipe the tears from their eyes. We pray for those that are going through sickness. 
Lord Jesus, send your Holy Spirit just to walk by so we can touch the hem of your garment. And when we touch the hem of your garment, we'll be made whole. Oh, we leaning and depending on you. Can't do nothing till you come. But through Christ, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. For great is you that's in us that he is in the world. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Father God, hold back the hands of the enemy. Yes, yes. Lord, we know that things are, look like they're running out of wild right now. All right, all right. But we know a, a Father that sits high and looks mighty low. Yes, yes. That you hold the key to life and death. Not these youngsters running around here, Lord, when yeah. they got guns, think they hold the key. You hold the key. Yeah. Oh, you hold the key to life and death. You've been so good. We thank you. Oh, Father God, we can't thank you enough. Look where you brought us from. You brought us a mighty long way. And your grace and mercy is sufficient, and it will carry us on. Look yeah. where you brought us from. Look where you brought us from. You brought us out of hiding. Now we're walking in the light. Oh, look where you brought us from. Well, you brought me. Well, you brought me. You brought me out of darkness. And I'm walking in the light. Well, look where you brought me from. Well, I got a hiding place. Yes, sir. Well, I got a hiding place. I'm gonna praise his name. Say it, Robert. Say it, Robert. Oh, I'm gonna praise his name. Well, you brought me out of darkness, and I'm walking in his light. Oh, yeah, he brought me from. Reports, you got a doctor. His name is Jesus. See, we can hide, he can hide us through the with his garment. He been so good. We can't give up. We have brought us too far. Can't give up now. We got to march on in Jesus' name. So Pastor, what we got now? Well, I got a hiding place. Oh, I got a hiding place. Well, you brought me out of darkness, and I'm walking through the light. Look where. 
Come on and give God some praise. Come on and magnify his name. Has the Lord been good to you? I don't care about people, but has the Lord been good to you? Has he brought you through? Has he ever picked you up? Has he ever turned you around? Has he ever kept you? Come on and give him praise. Brother Mitchell, thank you so much. Just look, just look, just look. Look where he brought me from. He brought us out of darkness into the marvelous light. Amen. Choir, if you don't mind, go ahead and take your seat. On this Father's Day, uh, we, we, we celebrate fathers. On this Father's Day, on Juneteenth weekend of 2023, we're celebrating fathers. Any man can have a child. Amen. But a father is one that will show up through thick and thin. Amen. We thank Every God for I those see. men and fathers that are among us today. Every day I tell and so we take a moment of special privilege to, to lift up fathers. Uh, first, there's a, a short video we want to show, and, and we share this with you, and then after that, our Worship committee is coming to lead us in a moment of celebration. Every day I tell my kids I love them. One day they ask me why. Without hesitation, my body shot my heart through vocal. Every day I tell my kids I love them. One day they ask me why. Without hesitation, my body shot my heart through vocal cords, aiming for their souls. As I told them how much they meant to me, almost instantly I Rose, no metaphors or similes, no analogies or melodies. I just froze. I realized I wasn't sure if they were asking why I love them or why I tell them. How often do we say what we want others to hear without understanding their question? I questioned if they understood my answers, not the ones with words, but the ones that can only be felt. The answers that were spoken when she ran into my arms as fast as the tears ran off of her face when a boy called her ugly. The times my son's eyes gazed the audience and looked for confidence in my presence and found peace in my smile because he knew that I believed in him. Even when he did not believe in himself, this love cannot be expressed only in words. It must be shown. So when they watch TV and only see good dads that don't look like me, they know it's not because we don't exist. It's just taking much longer than expected to recognize us. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. It, may your day be blessed. May your day be happy. And may you be healthy and continue to be safe. Amen. Look, most of all, happy Father's Day to the man upstairs, our Heavenly Father. Because he's the reason why the fathers are here today. And we really and truly thank God for him and for you all. On that note, I will let Mama Smith have her. Good morning, Andrews Chapel. Good morning. Good morning to our virtual worshipers. The author of our newsletter, or one of the authors of our newsletter, wrote in this month's newsletter, From the Heart, Is This Your Dad? And I thought it was apropos for today, because it's going to urge some of us Mm -hmm. All of us 
who have fathers long gone and fathers still with us to think about, is this your dad? Al Roker and friends wrote a book entitled Big Shoes and Celebrations of Dads and Fatherhood. This book is a collection of tributes from various people, some famous and others not so famous. In the introduction, Al laments that we tend to overlook dads and on Father's Day. He adds that mothers come first and cites that when a football player makes a great play, he looks back and say, hey mom, I love you. Never, hey dad. <laughs> he further states that grandfathers also push the needle higher than fathers. The essence of the book is to get you thinking about your father and fatherhood. He asks that you take a moment to look at your father Examine what you see. Do you see as a son the first hero? Or as a daughter your first love? Is he your guiding hand, your protector? Is he your storyteller or your dream giver? Is he the wind beneath your wings, the light that kills the darkness, or the safety net when you fall? Do you call him friend when you feel alone, a listening ear when problems arise, or the banker when funds are low? Is he that mirror <laughs> when you need a good look at yourself, or is he the engineer who straightens out the curves in the road of life, or the hammer who never misses the head of a nail? Might he be the strongest, the bravest, the calmest, the most sincere and loving person you know? And most importantly, does he lead by example? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The author then further states she had listed lots of qualities of a great dad, but now she encourages you to stay, take stock and appreciate the love of your father. She asked that you look back. If your father is long gone, pray, for the, pray to the Lord that the father that you had was so wonderful. Then look at your father today. Give him a big hug. Yes. Say, I love you, Dad. And then say to yourself, this is my dad. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> On that note, wait a minute, Miss Smith. We have a small token for all the fathers. Now, will all the fathers please be so kind and stand? Fathers. Fathers. I know we got some fathers in the house. <laughs> Urchus, can you all come and assist, please? Be so kind. We, we have a small little token. It's not a lot, but I would love to give you all a pair of Nikes, but my paycheck won't let me do it. <laughs> but we're going to give you all this little small token. And for the wives that are here, that they know their husband come, and see me later on and get you one to take to him. <laughs> you all are ready to go get that good dinner that the mothers then prepare for you so come on down <laughs> 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 
Come on and smile and be happy. And that saying it best. Did all of them get one? Make sure y'all get the pastor one now. <laughs> She's trying to get a photo, so tighten it up some. Look at our handsome fathers. Look at all of them. They look so good, don't they? Look at them. Smile, y'all. Smile. Y'all glad your father. <laughs> gotcha. Hold, hold tight. Jackie gonna do a prayer. All hearts and minds are clear. Heavenly Father, Stand before you are 20 awesome man of God, 20 fathers, God, that shields up under you, Heavenly Father. So, Lord God, we pray for their good health and strength. We pray for their love. We pray, Lord God, for their humbleness and their faithfulness, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for their boldness and strength and Lord God, all that you pour into them, pour your Holy Spirit into them, Lord God. That they may lead their families, Lord God. That they may lead, Lord God, the church, Lord God. Father, we thank you so much, Lord God, for our fathers today, Lord God. Those yes. gone past, Lord God, and those present that stand before you. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for good fathers. Yes. Lord God, one who don't mind bowing down to you, Lord God, and giving you glory. Yes. One who don't mind, Lord God, telling you that, Lord God, how they love you. Yes. Lord God, with open hearts and minds and soul, Lord God, we pray now, Lord God, that you would, Lord God, just watch, protect, guide, lead, Save, deliver, yes. heal, yes. Lord God, anoint, yes. send forth your Holy Spirit, Lord God, to these fathers as they nurture their children, as they support their children, Lord God, as they guide their children, Lord God. Yes. That the streets, Lord God, don't take their children. Yes. Lord God, I'm calling on you, Lord God, trusting in you with all of our hearts, leaning on you, Lord God, yes. acknowledging you, Lord God, with all of our ways. And we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. for touching the hearts of our fathers yes. to protect their household and to lead in the way that you desire for our families to go. And that is your way. Yes. That is your will, Lord yes. God, we pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, everyone.
give him the glory, give him the praise, give him the glory, give him the praise. He woke me up and he started me. Oh, give him the glory, give him the praise. Well, started you on your way has the lord been good to you give him the glory give him the praise did he wake you up this morning has he started you on your way has the lord been good to you give him the glory give him the praise he woke me up and he started started you on your way has the lord been good to you give him the glory give him the praise did he wake you up this morning has he started you on your way has the lord been good to you give him the glory give him the praise he woke me up
Glory to his name. Aren't you glad? You know, not just, not just a man. You know, thank you, Jeremy, the man. You know the man. Holy. Holy, holy, Lord God Almighty, early in the Morning, our song shall rise to thee. Santos, Santos, Santos. Merciful and mighty God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Oh, God, in three persons, blessed Trinity. Can we say that one more time? Oh, Trinity. Amen. Amen. Thank you, choir. Thank you, music team. We have a wonderful band here. I want to thank the house band. Amen. Brother Broaden, God bless you and thank you so much. Brother Reed, thank you so much. Young man, hold your head up. That, that, that's that Georgia State fellow right there. Amen. Amen. Christian, thank you so much. God bless you. In the third chapter of the gospel according to St. Matthew, we hear these words. They've been read once, but I would simply reiterate these last two verses. Verses 16 and 17. And when Jesus had been baptized, <laughs> just as he came up from the water, yes, yes. suddenly, say suddenly. That's how God works, suddenly. Suddenly, the heavens opened and and they saw the Spirit of God descending on him like a dove, <laughs> lighting on his shoulder. And a voice came from heaven, and the voice declared, This is my Son, the Beloved. This is my child. I love him. And with him, I am well pleased. 
the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's bow our heads for a moment of prayer. And now may the thoughts of our minds and may the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our rock, our father, and our redeemer. Let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Look at someone and simply ask them this question. Are we sleepwalking? Are we sleepwalking through life? Are we sleepwalking through fatherhood? Are we sleepwalking? If I had to put a tag on this, I would simply call it sleepwalking through fatherhood. Mm. At a recent conference on overcoming the challenges faced by black boys and men held by the prestigious Brookings Institute in Washington, D.C., Dr. Camille Bousset, delivered a paper in which she stated, the United States is facing a national crisis. Amen. It is at this moment virtually guaranteed that if you are poor, if you are male, <laughs> if you are African American, or Native American, yes, yes. you have a disproportionate high likelihood of ending up in prison yes, sir. or unemployed or even both. She went on to say, there is no other demographic group that has fared so badly, <laughs> so persistently yeah, yeah. for so long. It is this crisis that, that faces every father, watch this, of a child who is black, brown, or of color on this Father's Day during this Juneteenth weekend, 2023. Uh, it is this crisis that faces every father of a black, brown, or a child of color this Father's Day. Don't get it twisted. I'm not minimizing mothers or motherhood. Mothers have a relationship with their children that a father can never, ever dare have because a mother has a relationship from the womb. Yeah. Amen. However, 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 a father's role cannot be minimized today. We didn't come to talk about mothers and motherhood and mothers that have been like fathers. Y'all had your day last month. I got one brother that said amen. At least one brother, no, that's right. This is not Mother's Day, this is Father's Day. And although this is not a, a spiritual holiday, this is a day in which we are reminded of the role and the place of fathers in their families and in the lives of their children and even in society. You know, growing up, it's, it's always been different. Growing up, uh, uh, in my day, you could, you could say anything just about, just about you wanted to say about somebody's daddy except for mine, because we didn't play that on mama or daddy. You could say stuff about somebody's father, you could call them names and all kinds of things, but the moment you said, your mama, 
It was going to be on strong like Donkey Kong. I mean, it was, it was, it was going to be there. But, but on Father's Day, we, we are reminded that although fathers have never enjoyed the same level of respect and love as mothers, their task is just as important and impactful. I mean, on, on, on Mother's Day, you've got two aisles of cards. But Jeremy, when we go on Father's Day... Brother Mitchell, you go in on Father's Day, the aisle is shared with the graduates and you only got half an aisle at that. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not complaining, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Somebody, you, you already noted that you can, you can go to the game or go to the graduation and, and your child will walk across the stage and, and will look out and say, hey, mama, <laughs> and start crying. And, and you can get a grown man who, who, on stage when he's been drafted and picked and he'll stand there and first thing and I want to thank God and I want to thank my mama and I, can, I just want to thank my mama and daddies don't even get a tear I mean we don't get one cry we don't get I'm not complaining <laughs> but I'm here to say this morning that this issue of of, of Fathers uh, uh, and, and being overlooked and minimized has caught up with us today. This issue is compounded because today fatherhood is not what it used to be. Roles have changed. Expectations have changed. Needs have changed. Today's father is no longer always the traditional married breadwinner and disciplinarian in the family. The modern father comes in various forms. He can be single or married. He can be divorced or a stepfather. He can be externally employed or even a stay-at-home dad. He can be traditionally oriented or non-traditional. Somebody will pick that up on the way home. Mm -hmm. There are men who want to be women and, and women who want to be men and, and all of that. Children are growing up in the midst of that and, as long, and children are loved. But still there is nothing, if there's nothing like a mother, there's nothing like a, a father. Yes, yes. The modern father may be an adoptive or step parent and a more than capable caregiver to children facing physical or psychological challenges, the modern father has, has to deal with issues of sexual orientation, gender expectations, and divorce. The status of the father's relationship with his child's mother, somebody whisper, baby mama, <laughs> can impact things for better or for worse. Fatherhood is not what it used to be. <laughs> Here is the problem for every father today. It is that Satan wants us to believe that fathers do not matter. Well. That, that, that is the simple message yeah, for yeah. fathers. You, yeah, when, you, yeah. when you look at television shows and movies, if there's a father, he is always depicted as some stumbling, bumbling doofus of a guy that doesn't know what he's doing, while mother always has the right answer, does the right thing, and, and knows how to make things happen. And even today, fathers have been replaced by mothers. Yeah. In this age of same-sex marriages, there are those that are having children and there's no father in the house. They just had a sperm donor. Mm -hmm. And I'm not putting anybody down. What I'm pointing out is that things have changed. And yet in the midst of the change, you would wonder, well, have things gotten better? But when we see our sons out there gangbanging and yeah, shooting yeah, and selling drugs and doing dope, when we see our daughters out there dressed as though they are going to the pool when they're coming to church, when we see our daughters out there acting as though they are trying to back it up and 
<laughs> we must wonder, are fathers really needed or, or not? Because where we are right now, we're destroying ourselves. We're losing ourselves. And, yeah, yeah. and sons and daughters are not sure whether they are sons or whether they are daughters. Yeah. We're living in a different age. I'm not putting anybody down. I'm just lifting up the things that are going on. Here we must understand that Satan's message to fathers today, Satan's message to daddies is that you are not needed and that you are even not wanted. We don't need, all we want is your money at home. We don't need you to show up. We don't want you to do this. Don't want you to do that. Just make sure you send your money. <laughs> Satan's message really for fathers is why don't you just sit down, take a nap and, and sit this one out but we cannot sleep on what is going on around us today we cannot pretend that everything is okay we cannot go through life as though we are sleepwalking fatherhood is more important today than ever before the crisis that faces every father of a child who is black, brown, or of color is more acute and more in your face, more life-threatening than ever before. Black fathers and fathers who have children of color have to worry about things that <sighs> other fathers and other families don't have to worry about. Dads today have to worry about their sons and their daughters being approached by male or female predators out there, yeah, whether they're yeah, at school yeah. and sometimes yeah. even around the church house. Uh-oh. Yeah. Dads today have to worry about teachers who prey on young children, both male and female alike. Fathers today have to, uh, must be concerned about field trips and after-school events and parent-teacher conferences too. Fathers today must be aware that their children are being racially profiled, their sons and daughters are being racially profiled everywhere they go. Just a few years ago down in Jacksonville, Florida, uh, young Brianna Norwood, Nor, not Norwood, but Nor, Nunnard, let me pronounce it right, young Brianna Nor, Nunnard, 13 years old, uh, wound up in, cuff, uh, in handcuffs and detained by an officer of the, the law because she was simply trying to cross the street to get from one side to the other and did not cross at the crossing spot. Right. So he handcuffed that 13-year-old yeah. child. He did what he knew he didn't need to do. He used excessive force, excessive policing. And you know, when we go and complain, our complaints are dismissed, overlooked, rejected, and voices are silent because our children are being racially profiled. Yeah. Yeah. Dads must be concerned about not only grades and homework and sports and, and reading and writing as they've got to be concerned about all of that, but fathers must be concerned about cops kneeling on their sons' necks. Have to be concerned about our daughters driving while black. Yes. Have to be concerned about our sons and daughters out there walking while black, being stopped by the police while black, even barbecuing at the park while black, yeah. or even bird watching while black. And all of these are examples of what issues that our sons and daughters face. Dads, we can't sleep through this. We can't go about thinking everything is all right and, and going around as though everything is fine, as though we are sleepwalking through life. It is not. Sleepwalking can be a dangerous thing. Thinking that people are going to do right just because you expect people to do right can be a dangerous thing. Thinking that people are going to treat you as equal just because this is the land of the free and the home of the brave can be a dangerous thing. We cannot sleepwalk through life. I, I read a story uh, about James Currens. 
James Kearns was a sleepwalker. He was home one night, and in the middle of the night, he woke up and began walking around. He walked out of his house. He picked up a broomstick and kept walking. And when he woke up, he was standing chest deep in a pond. <laughs> sleepwalking can be a dangerous thing. Oh, yeah. Problem was not only that he had walked into the middle of a pond while he was asleep, but when he woke up, when he awakened, when he woke up, he was surrounded by alligators in the pond. Fortunately, he had that broomstick that he had to use to try to keep them away, and he began yelling, and he yelled long enough that somebody finally heard him at 3 a.m. in the morning out in the pond standing there, and he was rescued. Sleepwalking through life can be a dangerous thing. Our sons and daughters will lose their lives while we're sleepwalking, pretending that everything will be all right. Sometimes you got to stand up and show up, and that's what this, this passage really yeah, is yeah, about. Yeah. On this Father's Day, the, I, I believe that's why, why this passage was brought to me. I, I, that's why we have to hear this. Satan wants us to believe that fathers do not matter. But God wants us to know that fathers matter today. We cannot walk through life asleep. That's why God, when Jesus had gone to be baptized on yeah, that yeah. day when he went to the Jordan River and he got down there, that is why God, when Jesus was coming up from the water, yeah. parted the heavens and began to speak and, and spoke so that everyone could hear. And you know, when you're asleep, you don't realize that God is speaking. When you're sleepwalking, yeah. you think it, it's thundering, but God is talking to you. When you're sleepwalking through life, you think that you just can't, can't sleep, but God is trying to tell you something. When we're sleepwalking through life, we forget that God is with us trying to lead and to guide us. So it was that Jesus showed up, and God's example for fathers is given very clearly in the Bible today. God showed up three times in Jesus' life. At yeah. least three times he showed up. It was not at his birth because when he was even at the Annunciation, God sent Gabriel, God sent an angel to announce the birth. God didn't show up then. But it was at his baptism, not even when Jesus was 12 and he was there at the temple and engaging with the men and the women, with the Pharisees and Sadducees, the priests and the teachers, but God didn't show up then. It was when he was baptized yeah. that God yeah. showed up. That yeah. was the first time. The second time God shows up is on the Mount of Transfiguration. Yeah. That's when he showed up. And the third time that he shows up is in the garden I would have thought perhaps God would have shown up at the resurrection but God had already taken care of everything he sent an angel to roll back that stone he didn't show up then but it was in the garden in the garden and what is God's message then for us fathers and for us mothers and for families in 2023 God reminds us that he will show up watch what God did yeah the scripture says that Jesus had gone there to be baptized and as he comes up from the water, the heavens open and the Holy Spirit descends and lights on him yeah. and then a voice from heaven cries out. Let's see if we can break that down for a moment. God's message for fathers, first of all, is that you just have to show up. <laughs> And for those that may be divorced fathers, for those that may be single fathers, for those that may not have custody of your children, God reminds you, you still have to show up. Because children need to know that they are loved. God showed up. Because children need to know that they are loved and children need to know the presence of their father. Yeah, yeah. The presence of their father. 
Sometimes our presence will say things that we cannot say. Sometimes our presence says all that needs to be said. Sometimes our presence is all that is needed to make the difference in a child's love life because a child needs to know that his or her father cares. When Jesus came to be baptized, people were confused. And ever since that time, folk have been confused, wondering, well, why did Jesus go to John to be baptized? Jesus had not sinned. He had no need of repentance. Jesus, it is said, some say he went to be baptized because his mother told him you need to go there and your family and his family told him he needed to be baptized. But that's not the reason. God came to where Jesus was and Jesus submitted to baptism because that's what his father had taught him was needed in life. Mm -hmm. hmm. Jesus hears his father speaking and the voice which Jesus heard at the baptism is of supreme importance. The voice said, this is my beloved son. Yes, yes, yes. Can I give you the... D-K-R-V. Hey! That's my boy. Can, can I give you the remix? Hey! That's my boy. Come on, come on, come on. Hey! This is my child. Every now and then, fathers just have to show up. They know we're working during the day, can't show up at school. You got to take off work to go there. Mothers can't always show up. But every now and then, I guess we just have to steal away from work. Take, you know, rather than uh, reporting in and taking that long lunch break, you know what you do. You know how you do that? And you get that lunch break where you're gone about two hours. And you come back and you hit the clock and then you disappear for another <laughs> Yeah, yeah, take that 30 minute break right after you come back from lunch. Rather than doing all of that when you hit it, just go by the school and walk in and say, hey! You know they're gonna put you out, they're gonna think you're crazy. <laughs> hey! I came to check on my child. Mm -hmm. And if you show up enough times that when they see you coming, they'll understand, oh, oh, he's coming to check on his child. Y'all better treat him right. Y'all better act, treat that child right. God showed up to tell them that this was his son and, and that he loved his son. Children need to know that their fathers love them because our children will look for their father's love in all the wrong places and in all the wrong faces if they do not have their father's love. They'll look for somebody to love them like they wanted their father to love them. They'll look for somebody to love them like they hoped their father would. That's that's why you look at your children and you just tell them, I love you. Yeah. We talk on the phone. I said, Denisha, I love you. And you better say, I'll call Kristen up in Washington. Hey, how you doing? What's going on up there? What are you and Jack up to? Kristen, I love you. You have to tell your children you love them. Tell them that they're beautiful. Tell our daughters that you're beautiful, whether your hair is straight or curly, whether it's long and luscious or short and curly, tell them you're beautiful. Whether their skin is bright or dark, whether their complexion is smooth or not, tell them you are beautiful. Whether their lips are full or thin or their nose is bright, broad and wide, tell them that you love them. Tell them that they're beautiful. Tell your sons you're smart, you're handsome. You, yeah, yeah, I know you're athletic, but you need to be intelligent. You need to be articulate. Tell them that you love them. Speak into their lives what they need to hear. Let them know that you have expectations of them. They need to know. Let me move on. God showed up and said, hey, every now and then you just have to show up. And you know, God, did, did you notice that at the baptism there was no prayer? Nobody had said a prayer. 
That's important because nobody invited God to show up. Nobody said, now for all to come into this moment and as we, nobody said a prayer. God just showed up. And he let them know, this is my child. And we should show up in our children's lives to remind them of the ministry of presence, just knowing that you are there. Secondly, God reminds us that, that godly fathers matter and that when godly fathers show up, they can help point their children to their purpose, to their destiny in life. It was on the Mount of Transfiguration. When Jesus stood there, that Elijah stood on one side and Moses on the other and the mountain was shrouded in smoke and in cloud and, and they stood there and when they had disappeared after Peter, James, and John said, hey, this place is wonderful, this is great, can we just stay here and build some tabernacles, some tents and, and we'll camp out up here. It was then that God said, Hey, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. The first time he said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. The second time he said, listen to my boy. You see, it was about purpose. It was about destiny. It was about letting Jesus know what his mission was. Because if we don't tell our children what they should be doing, they will wind up doing any and everything that they really should not. If we don't remind them that there is a purpose for you, you're not here just, you know, like Daddy would have said, or if, if they go out there and jump off the bridge, you're going to jump off with them? <laughs> that there's an expectation, there's a purpose for your life, and this is not your purpose. You have to speak into their lives that purpose. He said, this is my son, Hear him, listen to him. Moses was the greatest lawgiver Israel had ever received. Elijah was the greatest prophet and miracle worker that the people of Israel had ever received. And yet, though those two were the greatest, when they disappeared, only Jesus was left. And that's important. Because when Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say that I am. Do you remember that response? Yeah. Some said, you're John the Baptist. Yeah. And others said, no, no, you're Elijah, come back. Yeah. Others said, no, you, you're like one of the prophets that have come back. Yeah. We have to tell our children who they are because the world are always trying to tell them, be like somebody else. Yeah. But your mission, your purpose in life is not to be somebody else. Because if you try to be somebody else, you'll always be the second best. If I can sing like Luther, I would still only be Luther Jr. If I could preach like Paul, I would still only be Paul the second. I, God does not call us to be who we are not. He calls us to be whom he has created us to be. You are an original. You are authentic. There's not another like you. What he has poured into you, he has not given to somebody else. The circumstances he's given you, the parents he's given you, the road that has been given you, in the midst of that, God is with you to make all of that unique for you. And what God does for you is for you. What God blesses you with is for you. What God gives you is for It's important to tell them that they don't have to be, you don't have to be Beyonce. Beyonce is great, but Beyonce can never be uh, Tina Turner. <laughs> Tina Turner is great, but Tina can never be Aretha Franklin. You have to be who God has created you to be. It was about destiny, and we should remind our children, fathers, Mothers, remind them of their purpose under God. Last thing I'll share with you as we come to this Father's Day. We must remind our children of who they are. 
Jesus, when he left the Mount of Transfiguration, went back into the valley. And there are always, we'll always have our valley experiences. Children will always have valley experiences because we have always had valley experience. Everybody has their turn in the valley. The time when, times when you messed up and like Elijah, you're running for your life. You're ready to throw your hands up. Remember Elijah's out in the wilderness. He just sat down under a broom tree ready to commit suicide, ready to die out there because he felt like he had disappointed God and messed up. There'll be times in all of our lives when we fail in our trying. We'll fail because of sin, fail because we did it. We'll fail because we took the money. We'll fail because we are addicted. We'll fail because we messed up our family. We'll fail because we flunked out of school. We fail because we, 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 had, we did what we knew we shouldn't do, and now we have to live with the consequences of it. And that's why... When they, our children hear that their destiny, they are pointed to the power of God. When you're reminded of your destiny, you know that you cannot do it alone. That's a father's job. That's a parent's job. <laughs> to prepare children to go out to to live on their own, to make their mark in life, but to remind them that you are never alone. That's why the third time that God showed up in his son's life, he'd already told, this is my boy, I love him. He'd already said, this is my boy, this is my child, this is my family. Listen to him, he's got a purpose. There's a mission. But on that Thursday night, Jesus' friends had let him down. <laughs> you know, people will hate you because of your gifts. Come on, God. Come on. Come on. Haters will hate just because God has blessed you. You haven't done anything to them. They'll dig ditches and throw rocks. They'll try to undermine you and trip you up simply because God has been good to you. Jesus was in that spot that Judas had turned him in and betrayed him. There he was in the garden waiting for the soldiers to come. You remember his words. Yeah. Down on his knees, Father, please let this cup pass from me. I haven't done anything to these people, and now you know they're going to crucify me. I don't want to do this. The same ones that I've spoken into and poured into a turning me in and one of them is going to deny me and another is going to doubt me and the others are going to start fighting and the others are going to run away to do what they had been doing. I don't want to do this. <laughs> you remember, we don't hear what his father said, yeah, yeah. but we know what his father yeah, said. Yeah. We don't hear his father speaking it, but we hear Jesus repeating what he heard his father say. And his father said, boy, I love you. Yes. You are not alone. He said, nevertheless, <laughs> let thy will be done. What Jesus said is, I'm going to do it because I am not alone. Fathers, we have to assure our children that we, they will fail sometimes, but we'll still love them. Parents, we must remind our children that they won't get everything right, and that's okay. Now, we may not tell them, but we can look back at our lives. Come on, can we keep it real? When, when, they, when they come in on Sunday morning after having gone out Friday night and, and, and all you can smell is Jack Daniels on their breath. 
Come on, son. Old school, I'm not talking about you. <laughs> I'm not talking about you. Go ahead and get on them and chastise them. But don't you forget that you used to go out on Friday night and you drank everything that you thought you were big and bad enough to drink. You had Jack Daniels, you had some Hennessy, you had your Cavassier, and you had a little bit of Coke and water. Not much. When your child is going out there and they messed up and they come back saying, uh, Daddy, Mama, I'm, I'm going to be a father. Uh, mother, uh, Dad, I'm going to be a mother. Go ahead and chastise them, but then let them know that you love them because it was only by the great, come on somebody, it was only by the grace of God. when they've gone out there and messed up with folk that meant no good and were undermining them and you tried to tell them and now they are tore up from the floor up and they come back to you, go ahead and, and say what you need to say, but you can, can let them know that it will be all right. Because they need to know that there's no defeat that God can't turn into victory. That's why Thursday night was important because Jesus needed to know that there was no death that God could not bring life to. We need to make sure our children know that there's no storm that God cannot quell, that there's no broken heart that God cannot heal, that there's no sorrow that God cannot touch, that there's no failure that is eternal, that there's no sickness that God can't heal. We should remind them and remind ourselves as parents, yes, we have expectations. Yes, we are with you. Yes, you will mess up sometime, but that's all right. There is no doubt that God cannot dispel, for God's power is made available to us. And that is our job, to remind our children that everything starts with God. They need to know there's no door that God can't open when they are told that they're overqualified. Remind them that, no, you know enough, you can handle the job, just that people are looking on the outward appearance and not on the inward appearance sometimes. But remind them that there's no mountain that's too high that God can't climb it, no valley that's too low that God can't come through it, that there's no giant too big that God can't defeat him. Remind them that there's no loss that God cannot restore. Remind them that there's no hell that God cannot destroy. Tell them that there's no death that can hold our God, that there's nothing that God can't do. Somebody say nothing. There's nothing that God can't do. So on this Father's Day in 2023, we are reminded that God showed up. And also as parents, then we should show up. That God spoke. And he reminded them that they are loved and we should give love just like God. And God reminded Jesus that he is never alone. And our primary purpose is to make sure that they have a relationship with God in the good times. So when the bad times come, when sickness comes, when trouble knocks, when unemployment comes around, when people turn their back and walk away, when trouble comes around and you don't have the answer, remind them they don't have to have the answers. As long as God has the answer, then everything, then everything, then everything will be all right. Amen, amen, amen. and amen. We offer Christ to you this morning. <laughs> the old song simply said, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou 
but draw thyself from me, where shall I go? If there's any doubt in your mind today that salvation is yours, if you, if you had to stand before God in judgment before the rising of the next sun, are you sure, are you certain without a doubt that God would say, stand on my right with those that will have eternal life? If you think that God might say to you, stay here on my left with those that never knew me, then I invite you today, those of you worshiping virtually, those of you worshiping present with us today, if there's any doubt, then come today and give the Lord your heart, give God your life, and give the Holy Spirit your service. We offer Christ to you today. As we sing this song, just a verse of it, please stand. And if you hear the Spirit of the Lord speaking to you, come now. Come now. Just step out and walk down the aisle. If you're, if you're uncertain and you want to be sure of your salvation, take someone's hand and, and take, bring them along. Say, walk with me. The doors of the church are open. The doors are open. We offer Christ to you. We offer Christ to you, oh my brother. We offer Christ to you. Oh, my sister, he will give you brand new life. He will give you brand new life, new life abundantly. Oh, come, come on to Christ. The doors are open right now. Let's say that one more time. If you hear his voice, come now. We offer Christ to you, oh my brother. We offer Christ to you, oh my sister. He'll give you brand new life. He will give you brand new, new life, new life, abundantly. Oh, come, come on to, let's bow our heads. And those of you worshiping virtually, if you hear the Lord speaking to you, and you're unsure of your salvation, pray this prayer with me. Almighty God, I confess that I've tried to save myself and have failed. I realize that no amount of good works, no amount of giving or good deeds, no consistent worship, not even that, will save us. I confess that I'm a sinner and I believe that you, Jesus, came into the world to save all who are sinful from sin. Come into my heart, cleanse me, save me, and give me eternal life. Be the Lord of lords and the King of kings of my life. And Lord, I thank you for this saving moment in which you saved me. Now, God, I pray for those that have prayed this prayer that you would put us, put us to you serving you, whether in high station or low, Lord, use us to accomplish your will and to live by your word. Use us to be witnesses of your salvation and your goodness. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. If you prayed that prayer, 
please go to our webpage, find our contact information, reach out to us by email or phone or text or social media, and let us know that you prayed that prayer with us today. And we'll connect you with this church or any other in which you desire to serve the Lord. Amen. 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 Minister, would you uh, lead us in our uh, offering, please, sir? Father God, we come to Aspali and our worship service where we offer up a portion that which you have already given and blessed us with. We ask that you take our offerings and increase it so it may be used to uplift somebody's life. We thank you for our life, our help, and our strength. We ask that not only do you bless this offering, but you bless all offering that is taken up in all just that is stabbed up on your name. But this is our servant prayer. We thank you in your son Jesus' name. Christ's sake. Amen. 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 Amen and amen. As we come to this moment, we're thankful for all of you that uh, join with us today in worship. May God bless you as we on this uh, continue through this this Father's Day to celebrate. Uh, some of you I saw on yesterday uh, at the uh, Juneteenth celebration. Uh, Senator Davenport, thank you for uh, for 22 years been putting this on and, and having holding this celebration. And we had a lot of fun out there, saw church members and, uh, and uh, there was food and all kinds of music and it was just good to be out fellowshipping with you. As we go through the week, I think there's a meeting on Thursday night and some of us are going to hold a Zoom meeting. I believe it's gonna be on Tuesday evening. So look for your emails regarding those. And of course, we'll be back on next Sunday as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. July is coming up. Uh, so you've got uh, July the 4th is coming. We're looking forward to Vacation Bible School this summer. Going to do that in July. Hoping to have a church picnic where we come together and do a little fellowshipping outside. And uh, then we'll close the summer out with revival. So get ready, get ready, get ready. Uh, I remind you that, again, you can give in any of uh, many ways four of those electronically on the web page. You can uh, send a church, a check to the church, to the post office box, which is on the screen, or you can mail it to the church address, and that is before you as well. Uh, you can always bring your check by. <clears throat> and those of you present today, take a moment now and go ahead and make your check out so that you can give before we leave. Amen. 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 God bless you and thank you. It's been great. We thank our choir. We thank the uh, house band. You guys are awesome. Uh, our ushers, the communications team, uh, ministers, and everybody. Thank you for sharing. And the, uh, the gifts this morning, the recognition for all of the fathers. We're joyful and thankful for that. All fathers, please come up. Let's stand here before us today. And I think are our acolytes coming? If our acolytes are coming, we invite them to come on. If not, I want all the fathers, come on up and, and let's stand here and have benediction together. Amen. Amen. If you have a father in the house, go and stand with your father. If you have a husband who is, is here, go stand with your husband. If you got a wife, bring your wife up. You have a girlfriend, bring your girlfriend. Now, if there's somebody you want to be your girlfriend, you need to wait. Just wait. No, this is not the place. This is not it. That's not it. That's for later. Thankful for all of these men. Thankful for all of these fathers. Amen. Many of us have grown children. Our children are scattered here, there, and everywhere, but we're thankful for our children. I want your children to see you today on screen. Amen. Sister Cyrilis, I think I'm seeing you this week as well. We've got a meeting that we're doing. Amen. Amen. That a lot, a lot of things are going on. 
my nephew, uh, Sheldon Rankins, he's getting married uh, next weekend, so I'm going to be uh, out of town doing a, a wedding. But uh, amen. The family is growing. Oh, okay. Come on, come on. <laughs> Let's receive this benediction. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him who is able to present us on that great day with exceeding joy, to our God who presents us faultless in his presence, to God our Father, to Jesus our Savior, to the Holy Spirit our power, to our God be power, glory, honor, and dominion, now henceforth and forevermore. Let us all stand. Let us all stand. Amen. Amen. and may the peace of God go with you. God bless you. Happy Father's Day, everyone. All these men, happy Father's Day. Thank you, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Let me give it to you. Don't leave before, and don't let Fumo leave either. I've got something for two of you. All righty. Wrap up. Did you talk to Natalie about doing anything? Okay.